I suppose most of you have heard of defragmentation, but uh, very few of you are using it. It's a very cool tool, and you might have observed that your computer becomes slower and slower with time. And this might be um, because of the defragmented files. So let's see what it means uh, to defragment um, a hard drive. So go to start all programs and then accessories, system tools, defragmenter. Um, it could be under um, control panel. So it depends on your Windows version. So there you go. Okay, okay. So this is what happens. So I'm going to, you need um, at least 15% of free space on a hard drive to use the defragmenter. So here you've got the file system, capacity, free space, and the percentage of free space. So I'm going to analyze my C partition. Um, if you don't know what a partition is, um, I'd advise you to watch my tutorial on how to create partitions. So I analyze and I've got the results in a few seconds. Okay, you don't need to defragment this volume. That's because I already did a few hours ago. So this is my hard drive. So the blue areas are contiguous files. We're going to talk about it. Um, blank is free space and then you've got unmovable files here uh, in green and then fragmented files um, here, the red ones. So let's imagine that this blank space is represents 20 megabytes and then you've got um, this here this is 10 and then oh, sorry and then you've got another 10 here and then you've got again here so this is the 10 10 this is another 10 etc so imagine that you want to install the software um let's say open office so you need at least i think of 400 megabytes to install so that means that um, your computer has to find 400 uh, megabytes of free space the problem is that the four megabytes are not going to be contiguous it means that you cannot find a space somewhere um of 10 or 400 megabytes um, at a time. So what you've got actually is you've got 20 megabytes of free space here and then you've got 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10. It could be one, it could be two, it doesn't matter. I, just an example. So what it means that when um, your computer is going to try to install uh, OpenOffice, it's going to start from the beginning and it's trying to find um, empty space. It goes here, 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 it says, oh, I've got free space. How much is it? It's, it's 20. So it's going to install the first the 20 uh, megabytes of the installation files. Then it's going to go again. Okay, okay, okay. Nothing here, nothing here. Up. I've got something here. Another 10, another 10, another 10. So it's going to continue like that. Um, and it's going to search for as many um, free space slots you can find. So that means that the OpenOffice um, files are going to be uh, scattered along your hard drive. So every time you um, click on OpenOffice Calc um, or whatever and you um, execute your OpenOffice inst uh, application, um, it it, that means the computer, is going to try to get all these files together. So it's going to gather all these files in order to open up your application. And all this gathering takes a lot of um, CPU usage and it takes time. So that means that it will take more time 
to open your Open Office application that it would take that it would uh, if all these um, slots were contiguous. So when we're going to defragment, this is what is going to happen. So let me go back again. Right here. So this is a slot here. So it is going to um, find, try to gather all the, this is red for example. Let's say that these files belong to um, Evernote, to the Evernote program. So it's going to say, okay, Evernote is fragmented. So let me find the other fragments. So let's say that these are the three uh, fragments of the Evernote program. What do you do next? So it is going to take the first one here and it's going to displace it, move it into the white space. So that means the white space is going to be after the red. So the white space was 20 um, megabytes. So it's going to take this thing. Okay, I'm going to put it here. So do I have any space left? Yeah, I've got another 10 megabytes. I'm going to take here. I'm going to put it here. So the 40 megabytes are going to be in contiguous spaces. So this is so the Evernote um, installation files or whatever they're going to be uh, f defragmented. Um, in in if we need more space, um, the defragmenter is going to move other files and try to gather the Evernote pro program files, and then it's going to do the same thing for every single program, and it's going to be all blue if everything goes well. Everything is going to be blue. And of course, some um, um, green files. The unmovable files are Windows files, so they can only be moved because they are being used at this moment while the defragmenter is working. So if I defragment, I'm going to save you the trouble, I'm going to pause. So we can already see what's happening. So you see there was empty space here. So it moved some files to the left and there is no empty space here. Uh, so here, but it created some by moving uh, this thing. So it goes on and on and on. And I'm going to pause and show you the final result. Um, I forgot to tell you that this is the progress bar, so you can see how it's going. 25, it went to 34%. Now it is compacting files. Um, in a while it's going to be moving this file or that file. And what it needs to do. So the process is over, complete, and this is the result. So we can see the difference. So you can see that there are still uh, fragmented files, but um, the software judges that it's not, it doesn't, it's not worth the time or whatever to defragment them. So this is the best you can do. But if you continue defragmenting more and more and more, um, but you don't need uh, to do that. Um, so there you go. It says this is the best I can do. So this is what defragmentation is all about. Use it. Oh, sorry, <laughs> before I finish the video, uh, I forgot that. You can schedule a defragmentation. You don't have to do it um, 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 on your own. and So you're supposed to do it on your own, but you don't have to do it manually. Um, because first of all, it takes a lot of CPUs and you don't have to um, start a defragmentation while you're working. So what you can do is schedule the task and tell your computer to defragment a hard drive um, at night. So you can go to start or while you're out shopping or whatever. 
So you can go to control panel and then schedule tasks and add schedule task. Again, this is the, the path I used. So we're here. Okay, so next, what is a program you want Windows to run? You can offer the defragmenter here. So you go browse, go to Windows, system 32, and you're going to find DF something. So it's going to be this. Defragmenter and TFS, whatever. Dot exe. So open. You can find name for the task. Defragmentation. Whatever. Do you want it to perf to be performed um daily, weekly, or whatever? I say weekly. Next, I want every every week or every two weeks or every other week. Uh, every Monday at three twenty-one in the morning. Say next. Enter the username. Enter the password. Blah 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 blah. It says there's a problem. Whatever. Um, he may not run. Blah blah blah. It doesn't. Um, we don't care. And then I can see the result. You can find it here. So the defragmentation is here. So if you change your mind um, about the time or the day, you can just click on it and schedule it, uh, reschedule it here. So you say, okay, it's not Monday, it's Tuesday. And of course, you can delete the task by right-clicking and delete. You should use a scheduled task, for example, for the antivirus programs, so defragmenting and um, stuff like that. So there you go. It deleted my scheduled task. So this is everything you need to know, or more or less everything you need to know about defragmentation.